I'm Elena Nolan, the Assistant Curator here at the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Um, and today we're going to talk about how I ended up here. Uh, since we've already had Ryan's path to becoming a curator, and mine is very different. So I thought we would illuminate that today. Um, if you could, please like, share, and subscribe to this video. Um, and we are also running a GoFundMe to help fund the museum while we're closed for the next six months or so. The links for that will be down below in the description box. Um, yeah. So, unlike Ryan, who has done ships exclusively as his teenage and adult life, um, I did not. I had a completely separate career for well over a decade. Um, very different, science-based and business-based, managing a horse farm. <laughs> But when I decided I needed to do a career change from that, I went back to school to get my master's degree. I already have an undergraduate in history, so European history, not military history. <laughs> um, but I knew I didn't want to teach in the classroom, so I decided to get a master's degree in public history, which is how I ended up here in Philadelphia. I moved here uh, to New Jersey uh, to get my master's at Rutgers. And when I graduated from there, I could not find even a part-time non-seasonal museum job. At that point, I was doing museum education. Um, so on a whim, I applied for a museum educator position at Historic Ships of Baltimore. Got it, of course, uh, <laughs> because I couldn't get one here. Um, so I commuted to Baltimore from Philadelphia, from Philadelphia uh, for about three months. But that was enough to get some actual hands-on museum education work on my resume. Um, I then got a museum educator position at the Independent Seaport Museum here in Philadelphia, as well as the American Museum or the National Museum of American Jewish History. Though ISM was my primary education position. Um, that was supposed to be a museum education position, but because most everyone else in that department uh, preferred the museum to the ships, I kind of became the ship educator there, which was fine by me. Um, but I met Ryan. I had met Ryan. We overlapped for a very short amount of time in Baltimore. Um, and so when he became the curator here at the battleship, uh, he had asked if I wanted to come be a tour guide but I couldn't swing the training schedule with all the other jobs that I was working. Um, but then it became, I, I managed to free up some time, started here as a tour guide, part-time, um, then became the archivist for a, a brief period of time, <laughs> uh, which during the time is when I cataloged this space, which is the library, um, our lending library. Then became the collections manager. Um, and then just recently my title changed to assistant curator. And Ryan and I kind of divide up our roles here as he is kind of the curator of the ship and I'm the curator of our museum collections um, because I have a little bit more, a lot more formal education in that aspect than he does. Um, and it works out pretty well because we can then come to, go to each other when we have questions and also um, kind of teach each other as we go along when we come across a problem can problem solve it from two different sides, which is very, very helpful for us, as well as being able to be flexible. Um, the education that I got in graduate school was super helpful, um, of course, one would hope. Uh, <laughs> that's mostly theory. Um, you don't get a lot of hands-on in grad school unless that is part of your internship. That's not what my internship was. Um, mine was education-based, but um, having that basis in theory, um, it's amazing how it sticks with you <laughs> and you can pull it out when you need to. Um, there's other just basic, uh, bits of higher education that help you in this position as well. Um, being able to research, fact check. Um, I was employed as a fact checker, um, through grad school. So pretty good at that. Pretty quick at it. Um, because a lot of times we'll get things, not so much current donations because I do try to get descriptions of things that people give them to us, but things that I find in the collection. Well, don't know what this is. It has a serial number or some other 
descriptor, what company made it, or something like that. So it's pretty easy most of the time um, to go to the internet and be able to find reputable sources uh, for that kind of thing. So at least we know maybe a when and a what it is, uh, which is enough at this point to sort it roughly into the collection, the appropriate part of the collection. Yeah, so it is very difficult to get any museum position right now, um, but especially once you start moving up in collections, um, a lot of the times it's basically just waiting for somebody to retire um, to be able to move up the ladder. Uh, any uh, My advice would be to get as much experience as you can, ask questions from people in your field, um, say yes to things always, which is a very corny thing that every, two, every guidance counselor has ever told you, but it's true. Um, say yes to things, get more experience. Unless you're working for a huge museum like the Smithsonian or Navy History and Heritage Command, um, where being a specialist and being the best in your field in that speciality will serve you well. As far for regular old museums, um, being able to do a lot of different things and being good at it, it will serve you better. As far as all the things that I do, um, I had said that Ryan and I kind of divided up so that he's the curator of the ship and I'm the curator of the collection. Um, so I'm in charge of all of our donations. I process all of those. I make sure they're um, stored as close to best practices as we can get. We don't have a building that's climate controlled. We keep our collection on the ship. So there is some leeway there. Um, so it's always um, trying to improve on what we already have. I also design exhibits. Um, I do all the research for that. I design signs. I figure out what objects are going out, what documents, if they're too fragile to go out, then do some preservation or preserve it or work or just try to make a duplicate that looks good uh, to get it out. But I also help with the tour route. Um, currently working on new tour route signs, um, which my job has helped before because I know I've got a pretty good handle now on our photograph collection. So it's pretty easy to pull things that are actually our, prop our um, intellectual property to use on our signs, not just open source things on the internet. I do really enjoy that in my job description, although I'm not positive it's in my job description, but it is now, uh, <laughs> is working not just with the collection, but also building exhibits. I really enjoy that. Um, the Three New Jersey's exhibit that we opened in January, I did pretty much start to finish all by myself, aside from sending Ryan up to climb on top of things to run cables, because <laughs> he's taller than me. Um, I really like being able to take some unknown object because there were a couple that went into that exhibit that we didn't even know we had. Um, finding something in the collection that then sparks another idea um, that then ended up building an entire exhibit around. Um, I like that. There's a lot of, there can be a lot of creativity in exposition, which I enjoy. Um, that's probably my favorite thing about this job. I, I really like to do research. Um, so finding objects of unknown origin, um, being able to research that so that we have an answer to a question, um, and then hopefully building that into something bigger, another bigger project. Um, definitely my favorite thing to do. Anything else you'd like to share with the unwashed masses? I'm trying to think everything that I told Haley the other day when she called. Mm -hmm. It was basically this, and I can't remember. <laughs> Is there anything you would like the world to know about? <gasps> yes. Okay. I hate Korean War things. <laughs> yes, you can throw that in there. Um, just to add, as far as exhibits go, uh, so next year will be the 70th anniversary of the ship going to Korea uh, for the Korean War. We arrived in April, April of 
1951. Um, and that is the most underrepresented part of the ship's career in our collection. Uh, the Korea Commission in general is underrepresented, but most of what we have is from the midshipman cruises that she did after the war. So uh, I will ask now, but keep your eyes peeled to our social media for um, a post as well. Um, I do, I am making a call for objects from our ship, from our sailors, from the people that helped reactivate her for her Korea deployment. Um, in the hopes that when we open in April, that I will have a new exhibit to uh, present to the public. Um, since Korea is known as the Forgotten War, um, and it's not something that we concentrate overly much in this museum either, even though we were there. So that is a new upcoming project. We have at least three new exhibits on the slate, on the table for the next year. So keep your eyes peeled. Thank you for watching. And um, again, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.